All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good, morning. good to see everybody out this morning. Um, Diggy, why don't we open up with a song this morning, and we'll, uh, we're going to have some special prayer here in a minute. When we go to the prayer, we're going to pray some special prayer, but let's open up with a song this morning. And if you're able, just be standing and sing out together. 154. 154, God leads us along. You have to be willing to follow. <laughs> Revive us again. 
251. We shall draw. The Lord will help us. I know where I'm going to go. And I really pray oh, that my God. family yes. and my child, you know, I pray that this community, you, that people wake up and realize that. Yeah. You know, And that's one reason why I didn't want to open up with prayer because I want us to come to a good season of prayer together. We're going to take yes. our prayer requests, but we need to work. We need to pray together for our country and our yes. our world that yes. you know, we still have yes. the God given right to be in these pews, and we need to show that we are thankful for that. Yes, not everybody has that. Yes, they don't have that that freedom, that ability to do that right now, and we should be very thankful that we can. Yes, yes. glory. Um, this time, uh, we will go ahead and take prayer requests because I think it's important that we we go to God with a good season of prayer. And, Obviously, today will uh, be our last Sunday here for a while. Kevin's 
pre-op test is later this week and then he will be in quarantine. So we will have to be very careful about who we're around yeah. so that we can get this Amen. transplant done this time. Woo! Um, we're we're very, very positive that it's going to happen this time. And, uh, you know, we're, we're very thankful for those the donors that are involved. Amen. Not just his Bless them, the Lord. Donors. There's multiple families involved in this, so we're just very thankful for that. And we know that God's got this, so. Yes. Um, any, any other prayer requests? I know we have quite a few this morning. I would ask that, as my request, we pray for Kevin, but also my sister-in-law, Paulette. Yes. Uh, the brother that Rufus lost was her husband. And I told you that I did pray with her over the phone, but I'm going to go see her either today or tomorrow. And I just pray that uh, she, her heart will be in a position where I can talk to her. Amen. Where I can reach her. Because I'm not very good at this. Yes, you are. I just are. pray that God would just yes, give you the right words. And the devil I'm is a liar. For you her are soul. good at it. He I'm is concerned a liar. for her soul, not just yes. her body. That's yes. right. It doesn't concern me. I mean, I want her to be able to walk again. Yes. But I want her to be saved. Yes. Yeah. Amen. I want to know that she's saved because I care about her. Yes. So pray for her if you would. Amen. And pray for me. Um, my pastor's <clears throat> wife, Polly Rosser, is um, starting her chemotherapy this coming week. Um, please keep them in prayer. Um, her husband's having um, back issues, uh, Mark Rosser, so keep them in prayer. Um, and we do need to pray for our world and for our leaders. We need to pray for all those that are outside of the ark of safety. We all have friends and family members that we wish were here with us right now. Um, maybe they're listening online. That would be great. Um, if God could soften their heart and let them know that the time is drawing near and they need to get this straight now before it's too late. Um, and I just am so blessed to be able to be in the house of God today. Um, when I was in um, studying, God just came in a mighty way and he just um, overshadowed my whole area. And I just uh, sat there crying and just was in just weeping because I'm just so grateful that he knows my name, um, that he can be there when we're, we're afraid or confused or conflicted. I just love him so much this morning and I'm just so grateful to be here. Absolutely. I'd like to remember my son and daughter-in-law both talking about going to church. And like you said, because when we were in church before, we didn't want to be in an area like this. Yep. But I want him to go to church and get Jesus in their heart. That's and right. Get, not get each other back, but get Jesus in their heart. That's right. And Jesus will work the rest out. That's right. Church. Amen. He'll work the rest out as long as they do it for the right reason. That's right. Amen. She is supposed to go to Sunday school this morning. I pray that she did. Jeff had to work today, or he said he would have been in Sunday school this morning. Yeah. So just pray that they'll do it for the right reasons. And mm -hmm. my whole family. Some of you are confused about the name Zelma. <laughs> it's because my sister named her baby after me, Zelma. Mm -hmm. So we all say Zelma Faye, and the rest of the people just say Zelma. So I just wanted to clarify that. So when you pray, uh, Zelma Faye does have a lot of, of problems uh, nerve wise. And um, so, yeah, pray for Zelma Faye. And pray for me. That's right. We can all use Absolutely. prayer. Absolutely. We definitely want to pray for our military mm -hmm. and the families of the ones that have to let their military go. Um, you know, for a temporary, you know, stay or wherever they're going to help out. So we definitely need to be in prayer for all of them. 
Yes. I mean, Joe Duvall, our West Central District Superintendent, uh, had a stroke the other day at work, yeah. and so he's still in the hospital. Let's keep him in our prayers. Absolutely, so, yeah. I got that email. Joe Duvall had a stroke the other day, so we definitely need to keep him in our prayer for Jennifer and Cheryl. So, um, a lot of, there's been a lot of um, sickness and illness. Um, just so many that blows my mind that I can't even sometimes recall the names, to be honest. So by way of uplifted hands, I know we all have unspoken. Um, just want to pray out together. So this morning we're going to do things a little bit different um, because I, I feel it's very important. I know that we want to be careful as far as distancing and touching and everything, but I feel like we need to, um, if we're able to come up to the altar together and pray, whoever or whatever, but I, I think we really need to be really general with our prayers this morning and, and open up the order at this time if we want and we'll take these to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, precious and heavenly Father, Lord God, we come to you for our world this morning, Lord God. We know it is unfolding and Lord, we know why it's unfolding and Lord God, I pray that you just be with each and every one of us to give us strength. that passes all understanding, Lord God, and for our family members and friends, Lord God, that might be outside of the ark of safety this morning, Lord God, I pray that you soften their hearts and let them know that this is just a precursor, Lord God, of the fact that you are coming back and you will be here, Lord God, at some point, and we need to be ready to go, Lord God. And Lord, for all of these um, petitions that were brought in forth of Paulette and for Vicki, Lord, I pray you give her the, the voice and the words to say to her, to speak to her heart, Lord God, and I pray that her heart will be softened to the point where she will accept whatever it is that you have for her today, Lord God, or whenever it is that she travels out and to see me, Lord, I pray that you just be with her and give her the guidance and the words to see me. Lord God, be with Polly and Mark this morning, Lord God, and touch Polly's mortal body from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord God, and touch Mark's body and his back, Lord God, give him strength and, and through each and every trial and tribulation, Lord God, I pray that you just be with them. Lord, be with Kevin. Keep him healthy and safe, Lord God, and I pray for the donors that are involved, Lord God. I pray that you strengthen them and guide them and direct them and give them a blessing beyond blessings, Lord God, for being able to do the things that they're willing to do to help people. And Lord God, I pray that Kevin is, becomes a, a new man, Lord God, and that he just has strengthens his mortal body and, and everything goes smoothly and everything goes well and all is well within him. Lord God, I pray for um, for the families that were spoken, for, for Zelma Faye, for Zelma, Lord God, I pray for each one of them. Lord God, I pray for Susie's family, Lord God, I pray for Sheena, Lord God, I pray for her son and, and his situation. I pray that they, they reach out to you, Lord God, most of all. Lord, I pray for each one that needs a touch from heaven this morning, maybe with uplifted hand that we haven't spoken out loud. Lord, I pray that you touch each and every one of us, Lord God, and I pray that for the families that are out there now that might be listening, that might need a touch from heaven, Lord God, I pray that you just touch them as well. Lord, we love you, we honor, we praise you. Lord, we thank you for this church where we can come in one mind and one accord and, and be blessed and know that where our help comes from. Lord, we just thank you this morning for being with us. We have felt your presence in a mighty way. We have felt that you are here and you are among us and you are ministering to our spirit and to each and every one of us. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you and we, we just can't even thank you enough for all that you're doing. And, and Lord, I pray for those that are listening online, Lord God, this morning, if they have an ailment, Lord God, I pray that they bow their head and their heart to you. And Lord God, if they're sin sick, I, I pray that they bow their head and their heart to you. Lord, I just love you this morning. I thank you for all that you do. Lord, I thank you for all that you do. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. There might have been some cracking knees and joints getting up from that altar, but when we see Jesus, 
We're going to have our new bodies and we won't have to worry about that. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Cheryl, has, Cheryl has a song this morning for us. Bless her, Lord. Bless you. testimony they want to share this morning. God has been good. Yes, God has been very good to all of us. I thank the Lord I'm here. I woke up from the terrible headache. I still got a headache, but not near as bad as it was my heart. I'm going to cuss on you. I'm not going to go. I just, I just feel too bad. <laughs> so I'm laying there and I'm cussing on you. Why did you feel so bad? So I got up and got my clothes and said, now I don't feel too bad. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I just want to thank the Lord for giving you the want to. That's yeah. right. Amen. Giving you the want to when your body says, I, now you don't need to go. Yeah. That's the old devil saying, now you don't need to go. Yeah. yeah. I, I was invited to a, a sisterhood celebration yesterday, and um, <clears throat> it was awesome. There was 70 women godly women in this sanctuary and um it i can't even explain the power of god that <clears throat> fell with all these like-minded women in the same room thinking the same thing there for the same reason to celebrate one another um i was just so blessed to be there but we had a lady who was sharing her testimony and singing and the the lightning rod feeling that I got through my whole body was like, and I know it's not about feeling, but I'm telling you what, God can show you when you're on the right path and when you're in the right place and you're doing what he wants you to do. I think that's why we get those feelings here, there, and everywhere. It's not a daily feeling, and I know that. But when you get those feelings, it's like a reminder of, Yes, this is where I want you. This is what I want you to do. I wish y'all would have went with me. Oh, my goodness. Um, if they ever have it again, I will definitely bring the whole ladies' church because I'm telling you, it was powerful. And I left there just filled up. My cup was overflowing. You know, it was just so powerful. And um, I sat next to a, a, a beautiful sainted woman who said... Um, 
so you're a pastor and she said i am too honey and she's probably in her 80s <coughs> i would guess and she said it's it's not easy being a lady and being a pastor but it's worth every blessing that god gives you along the path and i'm like wow yeah. i mean here she is telling me and she just was just a blessing into me just because she just was uh I don't know, but the whole day was just, it was just a, a, a day to refresh and renew and know that there are women, there were women from all walks of life who were from all different backgrounds, all different places, and it was just so amazing, and um, I was just so thankful. After I left there, I, I texted him and went, wow, I mean, because it was, it, it was just one of those things where you, I felt like I floated out of there, That's so so but God can do that for us. He can yeah. regenerate and rejuvenate. And and even your pastor needs that sometimes, you know, because you yeah. can just fill yourself back up. And um, it was just amazing. So awesome. I'm just so grateful that God allows people to have those ideas to like, you know what, we need to celebrate this or we need to celebrate that. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it was, it was great. It was great. So. That's awesome. I want to praise the Lord for how he's been with me through this week and yes, just blessed me and helped me. And I went to my cancer doctor uh, the other day, Friday, and he said, I'll see you in six months. So I said, Woo! praise thank the Lord for that. Yes. You know, eight years, and I just thank the Lord. Glory. You know, it just seems like something a little bit. I said, well, I don't know how he actually knows anything because he didn't do blood work. But I'm not going to argue about that because That's I right. hate blood work. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so, but the Lord knew, and he's in control, and I just want to praise him because it's all God. Yes. It's nothing in me, nothing in the doctor, but it's the Lord that takes care of everything, and he That's takes right. care of me. Woo! He blesses me. Yes, he does. Um, this yes, week, I was able to pay off a, a loan, and I say, praise the Lord for that. You know, Woo! I don't have that on my burden anymore to come up with the money to pay that, and I just thank the Lord. He takes care of me, and I love him supremely. Yes. Amen. Glory. Woo! This church is very blessed to have you, Cheryl. Yes. Amen. You do more than you could ever imagine for all of us. That's yes. Right. Amen. And without even that's skipping right. a beat. Yep. That's right. She doesn't think twice. She that's just right. does it. Yep. Oh. By way of announcements, we want to be in prayer, and we do not want to forget about our upcoming revival, April yes. April first through the third, with Aaron, wow. brother Aaron Satterfield, and then the Satterfield boys will be singing. And that's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So. Um, there's a lot of other upcoming revivals too. Is Bethel's this week or um, Yankee Hill? I mean, this week? Uh, no, it starts next week. I think it's next week. It's on the board back there. And Calvin Ray will be preaching that uh, 7.30, I think, nightly it is. 7.30. So um, just be in prayer for them as well. But the Lord will show up and souls will get saved. Yes. So. Randy Peters is going to be somewhere. Uh, at Lucasville. Yeah, Randy Peters has yeah, quite a few. Lucasville. Um, He's got several close here yeah. in the next couple months. Yeah. Um, but you, if you have him on Facebook, he, his wife helped him. He posted that on his schedule on his Facebook. So. Oh. Anybody else have anything? Just going to thank the Lord that He has blessed me every day. Precious song. Precious song. Yeah. You don't know what a blessing it is to be with her. Mm -hmm. oh. Things happen, <laughs> and it is a blessing. She and she's like a little light to me. I'll say something, and she'll come right along with a little thing, you know. I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you keep her on track, don't you, son? Yes, she does. No, she yeah. likes my cell phone track. Yeah. <laughs> she's so happy, right? Yes. She gets so much she, help. Praise the Lord. She, Susie was sharing with me. That her and Sonia had gone. They were in the car going somewhere. And she said, uh, Sonia said something. And Sonia was praying. Mm -hmm. Susie didn't know that. And so she, she's busy praying. And Susie says, Well, now listen. She said, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to God. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I'm trying to do everything right I can to. I said, I know, honey. <laughs> that's right. That's what the sisters are for. That's a lot. That's awesome. All right. If all hearts are clear at this time, we will uh, 
ask Pastor Cheryl to come up and give us what the Lord's laid on her heart. And we want to make sure that we appreciate our pastor. She does a lot for us. She's done a lot with us. Yes, she does. Um, food, you know, deliveries and things. And she, she puts a lot on her plate and a lot on herself. And we don't want to ever take her for granted. So we love you. I love awesome. doing that, though. I love doing that. And I have to clarify, you know, I posted something and everybody, some people misunderstood what I meant. Well, don't worry about this old lady. She does this every once in a while. <laughs> no, no, but it wasn't just, no, no, I honey. It wasn't just you. There was a couple that didn't understand what I meant. I love to do the food ministry. I love it, okay? What I was trying to convey, and I didn't do it very well, obviously, was that my little vehicle can only hold 17 families. I have 17 now. I'm at max. That's all I'm saying. If I get more, I have to have a volunteer. Okay? Yep. So that's all it was. I didn't say I don't want to do it. I wasn't grumbling because and complaining. So no, I thought something was wrong with the car. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, it's just um, I'm at max. That's all. So, um, but no, I, I love to do that because I... I Feeding the soul and feeding the spirit is great, but we also have to meet the needs of people. So, um, our message this morning is coming from Psalm 121. Psalm 121. <clears throat> Psalm 121 starts, I will lift up mine eyes into the hills, from whence my help, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, Amen. which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he keepeth Israel. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Our dearest, precious, and heavenly Father, Lord, I come humbly before the throne again, Lord God, to be used as thy humble servant. Lord, give them the message as you have given it to me, nothing more, nothing less. Hide me behind your cross and cover me in thy blood. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our help comes from the Lord. Amen. Our help doesn't come from Washington, D.C. Our help doesn't come from our local government. Our help comes from the Lord. Amen. You know, I've, I've read a lot lately of people that are scared of the world situation. And we are to be um, concerned, of course, but fear is of the devil. We can't be fearful because if we are right with God, that's where our help comes from. Our help, unfortunately, doesn't come from our president. It doesn't matter who's sitting in that seat. It doesn't matter. Jesus Christ is the one we should be worried about because he is our help in a time of need. He is our help right now in our present danger that we are in. He's our help every day. I get up every day and thank him for another day of life. Because without him, every breath we take is his. Whether we, whether we believe that or not, whether somebody believes that or not, God gave us the breath of life and he can take that breath whenever he feels necessary to take it back. But our help comes from the Lord. Um, and he made the heaven and the earth. He made everything. He even made what is going on in this, in this current situation. He made those people. And all the conflicts and chaos that's going on. He made everything. So he's not surprised by the way in which our world is going right now. God is never surprised. God can do everything but fail. So he is not surprised by what's going on in our world right now. And he is always awake. He's never asleep. So you can go to sleep at night and give all your cares and your worries to God. And you can sleep well knowing that he's not sleeping. 
He's awake and alert, and he has got his hand on everything. Even though it looks chaotic and even though it seems chaotic, God is still in control of all of this. Because the Bible is being fulfilled daily. Daily, we're getting closer and closer to his coming. Every day. Now, we don't know when that day is. He doesn't know when that day is. Only the Father knows when that day is. But we have to stay ready. And we have to know that our help comes from God. Amen. We have to stand in God's grace. Stand on it. God has grace and mercy abundantly for us. We can't worry about all of these things. Because here's the thing. You can sit in your house and literally scare yourself to death. Mm -hmm. Watching what's on television. Watching what's in the news. Watching what goes through your online feed. You can be absolutely petrified. Or you can stand in God and say, you know what? No matter what happens. No matter how big it looks to us, God is still in control. Amen. And some of these things do look like, wow, how are we ever? He is still there. He is in control. Because look at the, the things that he's gotten us through so far. Yes. Look at our own little lives and how many things that God has brought you through so far and never left you. He's walked through each and every one of them with you. We have to stand firm in what Jesus is in our lives. We have to stand on that. We can't back down. We can't back up. We can't, we, especially now, we have to stand firm in our relationship with Almighty God. We have to stand firm on that. We cannot take an opportunity and feel now is the time to slack off or slack back because we cannot. We can't afford to do that. We have to be ready because when he splits that eastern sky, we need to just know that we're going home. Amen. We don't need to sit back and think, uh-oh, I think I just heard that. No, we got to be anticipating that. We got to be ready for that. You know, when you're a kid and you anticipate Christmas or your birthday and you're going to get presents and you're all excited, that's how we need to be for the coming of God. A Christian person should be that kind of anticipation, waiting. And watching and ready and excited for when that happens. Not fearful, not confused, not scared, not worried, but excited and anticipation for what's going to happen. We need to stand in the gospel of Jesus. We need to tell any, anybody and everybody that will listen to us right now about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because it's ever so close. We are a breath away. Yeah. And there's so many of our friends and family that are lost and undone without God. They're outside of his ark of safety. And if he came right now, we all know, we can think of at least five people in our brain right now that we know probably aren't going to make it. Yeah. We can all say that. So it's ever so close. It's just ever so close. And it's not just for your pastor to share with people. You can share with people. You know, I, I I know that when I when I first started this walk, I thought, well, I'm not going to tell people about Jesus. That's the, that's the pastor's job. I'm not somebody that can say that. But here's the thing. You're going to meet people I'm never, ever going to meet. And I'm going to meet people you probably will never meet. That's why God saved you. God can use you right where you are in your circle of people. God can show them how you live your life in front of them. And you can stand on his gospel. And you can show them that there is something to this. It's not just that we go to church and we sing a few songs and we praise a little bit and we go home. There's a lot more to it than that. But the outside world might think that that's what we do is this is just like a club and we come here and we, we sing a few songs, we testify, we, we worship a little bit and we go on about our lives. But there's a whole lot more to this. Amen. It's a relationship that we have with him. And even though these things are chaotic and crazy, the hope is from Jesus. We get our hope from on high. Amen. God will watch over his people. Yes, he 
If you are inside God's ark of safety, just like we had in our, our Sunday school lesson, he will cover you. He will protect you. He will not leave you. He is going to protect his people, period. He will protect you. And now is the time more than ever that we want that protection. We want to feel that love. We want to feel that we are covered by his blood. We want to feel that we are protected by anything that this world can throw at us. And there's so many things that this world is trying to throw at us and get our minds confused and, and, and not think about what's going on everywhere else. Joe and I were talking last night about how, you know, all of these chaotic things are going on and then they want us to focus on that and not on the, the things that matter to those of us everyday people. Uh, you know, the inflation and other things. We don't notice that anymore because there's all these bigger things that go on. That's what the devil does. He starts stirring up confusion and chaos, and then he makes something bigger for you to focus your time and attention on. But guess what? Beyond that big thing is an even bigger thing. It's Jesus Christ. And we have to keep our focus straight as a child of God. We have to keep our focus on him and not on all of these other things. Yes, this world chaos seems big, and it is. I'm not going to diminish it. It is a big thing, but he's bigger. Amen. No matter the diagnosis that someone can get, no matter uh, what happens in our world or our lives, or he's bigger. Amen. He created this world. Yes, he, did. he has a plan and a purpose for each and everything that's happening. We have to just watch it as we are watching a movie unfold. Yes, it's a little discouraging and it's a little dis disarming. But guess what? He's in charge. Amen. He's in control. Yes, yes. He, if you read the back of the book, we win. Amen. Okay? Yes. Read the Bible. Know your Bible. Yes. We win in the end. We are not. We are not losers in this. Amen. If you know Christ and you are ready to go, when he, we are winners. We're, he's going to split the sky and we're going to go with him. How much more wonderful could that be? It's those that are outside of that ark that just aches my soul. Because when I see these things start to unfold, I think about my own friends and family. I think about all the people I know that I've tried to witness to and I've tried to share my, my spiritual side with them. And they just kind of step back and say, well, some of them even told me when I get older I'll go. Well, you know what? The way the world is going, we may not have that. The way people's health goes, we may not have that. I may not have the privilege of getting to be a, an old woman. I may not get a chance to do that. We just don't know. But the thing is, is we need to be ready when right now, today is the day of salvation. And if you have anything that is blocking you from God or what God has for you today, today don't leave here with it. Don't. Don't take that risk. Don't leave with your lamp not trimmed and burning and your oil filled up and that your saucer is overflowing and that your spirit is full of what God has for you. Amen. Don't leave here without that. If you're half full, fill her up today, Lord. Fill me up. Fill my cup, Lord. Because if we don't, we don't know the moment or the hour. We could all be going home today and it happens. We could all finish with church this afternoon and it happened and we'd be in the parking lot. We don't know. It's that close. We are but a breath away. But it's exciting if you're a child of God. I know you're all looking at me like, she's nuts. <laughs> but I'm serious. If you're truly a child of God, we are in an exciting time. If you know what God's word says, and see that these things are coming to pass. It's anticipation. It's that childlike anticipation that we can have on the coming of our Savior. You can have that. We can be so excited about him coming back. And I want to go. And I want you to go. And I want my family and friends to go. And I want everybody out in the, in the cyber world to go. I want us all to have that experience. When he splits that sky... And we all get to go. Amen. I want that. Mm -hmm. I don't want anybody to go, uh-oh, 
It just happened. And I'm still here. Oh, I don't want that to happen to any of us. Because can you imagine you're looking around and everybody's gone but me? If you've ever watched the Left Behind series that are on uh, on uh, YouTube, it scares me. Because they have one where they're all in a church and boom. And some people are still sitting there. What? Why would that happen, Pastor? Well, because some people who are in church, and I'm not saying that any of you are these people, so don't don't get upset with me. But some people are in a church right now, in a pew, who are there, but they do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And they think they are okay. But until up and until that time, they're not going to know because they're sitting under somebody who's not telling them that they need to have their life straight with Jesus Christ. Right. Right. It's not always pleasant to hear those things from, from the pulpit or any other where. But a pastor who will not tell you that your life depends on where you stand with Christ, mm -hmm. that's not somebody you ought to sit under. Right. If somebody's not going to tell you that this word is going to offend you. If you're not following this word, it will offend you. That's not somebody you ought to sit under. And it has nothing to do with me. If you have another pastor beyond me, who knows? Don't sit under anybody who doesn't say, thus saith the word of God, and tell you what this word says, and tell you that there are sins that are going to keep you out of heaven. And if you're doing that and you think that you're going to be okay, you're not. My heart aches for that because I don't want anybody to miss it because of something I did or didn't say. Because I'll tell you what, when I'm in front of the Creator, I have a lot to be to be uh, concerned with because what I tell you, I am going to be judged for. And if I tell you something that's misleading from this, I'm going to be judged for that. And I don't want to tell you anything that it doesn't say. Why? Because I want you to make it. I want us all to make it. And I certainly want to be somebody that God can say, you know what? You did the best you could and you understood it the way I told you to and you told him exactly what I told you to. That's what I want to hear. I don't want to hear, why didn't you say what this says? Because there's so many times people will ask me questions and I will tell people, it's not my opinion that matters. It's Thus saith the word of God. I can show you in the Bible where it says that. Because when they question me, that's where I go. Is I, I give them scripture to back it up. Because honestly, at the end of the day, my opinions don't matter at all. Not my political view, not my personal view. None of that matters. This is what's going to get you into heaven. Not my personal opinion about what you're asking about. So I will point you back to where it says what God says about that. And then you can decide whether or not you're right with that and line up to that. Because you're not supposed to line up to me. You're supposed to line up to his word. Amen. You're supposed to line up to what Jesus' example was for you. You're supposed to be what he has for you. You're supposed to be that kind of person that he has for your life. Not what I want you to do. Not what I want you to be. You're to grow in him, not in me. You're to follow him, not me. I'm just a mouthpiece for him. That's my job. My job is to take what he gives me and give it as the way he told me to give it to you and be done. My opinions don't matter. And if somebody's going to mislead you by all of their opinions and their decisions and their you know, take that with a grain of salt, but go back to what the word says. Sure. You know, I told them a Bible study. Joe and I go to a lot of revivals and um, write down scriptures that they're quoting. Go back and read it for yourself. Make sure they didn't take out a big chunk of it or pieces and parts of it. Make sure that who you're listening to is a spokesman for Christ. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying there are people out there that are, are honestly misleading you. There are some, and I'm sure that they know they are. But just don't be deceived. 
You can't be deceived if you know what your Bible says. If you know what you said, what it says, you can't be swayed, you can't be turned, you can't be deceived because you know what your word of God says and you know where your help comes from and that your help comes from God. You can know that for a fact. You don't have to depend on somebody to spoon feed it to you. The, the best part that you can do for yourself as a Christian, and especially in these times that we are in right now, is be strong in your word. Be strong in your prayer closet. Why? Because this is going to come in handy. There might come a time they come and get this from us. We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. But if they do, and it's in here, and it's in here, they can't take that from you. They can't take that from you. They can't take your relationship with Jesus from you. Only you can do that. Only I can do that. If I step away from God, he doesn't move. I did. <laughs> Same with all of us. If we step back from God, that means we move. He doesn't move. He's there for us with open arms, and he wants us to know today that his, our help comes from him. Amen. All this confusion and chaos is from he who is in this world. But he who is in this world is not as great as he who is in us. Amen. Amen. He is the one we need to listen to and answer to. We need to be deep in our word. We need to dig in deep. And when you start getting afraid or scared or whatever, go to the back of your Bible and where there's a word, fear. Go read scripture about fear. Go read it. He will spill it out for you and tell you why you shall not fear. It says in this Bible 365 times fear not. Fear not. That's one for every day of the year. We're not to fear. Our help comes from God. And if our help comes from God, who are we to fear? A world leader or a president or a congress or governor or whatever, town council, whoever it is. We're not to fear any of those people. Our help comes from God. Our power comes from God. When we're a child of God, our power comes from our Father on high. He is the one that we get our power from. He's the one we get our peace from. He's the one we get our strength from. And right now we need his strength. Yes. Now more than ever, we need his strength. Amen. And I love that I've watched some of your spiritual lives are growing in him. Not because of me, but because of him, and I love it. Why? Because when you get strong in him, when those waves come and beat and batter against the hull of your ship, you can steady it in Christ because he's our anchor. You can drop anchor in Jesus Christ, and even though the waves are going around, you're steady and you're straight, and you know exactly where you stand. That's what you need. Especially in these times that we're in. We need to stand firm on the word of God. We need to stand firm in him. And we need to tell the enemy, my help cometh from the Lord, Amen. which made the heaven and the earth. That's right. Amen. My help comes from the Lord. Amen. And we need to remind ourselves when we get down in the end of those times, my help comes from God. My help doesn't come from our government. My help doesn't come from my family. Even though I love them, my help comes from God. Amen. And my days may be numbered, but my help comes from God. Amen. Our world might be coming to an end, but our help comes Amen. from God. Praise the Lord. We can stand ready. Yes. And anticipation. Come, sweet Jesus, come. Yes. My mom told me I was crazy when I said that the first time. But you know what? If you're if you're right with God and you're so excited about his coming. Let him come. I will be sad for those who don't make it. But I will not be sad for me. Because we get to go home. We get to go home. That's where my heart is. That's where my soul longs to be. And if you're a child of God this morning, that's where your soul should long to be. Shouldn't worry about all this chaos. Our help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Amen. 
He made it all. Yes, he did. He's not, he's not scared of this. He's not confused by this. So we don't need to be. Right. Put our trust in Jesus Christ Amen. this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And if your cup is half full or you're not filled up and to overflowing this morning, come give it to him. Come say, Lord, fill up my cup. I want to just have it just spilling over on my salsa this morning. Because I'm telling you, when you live your life that way, these things that happen are disheartening and, and troublesome. But then you can leave it there and you Amen. can go, Lord, I trust you. Yes. I trust you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know you know what's going on, Lord. I know you can fix this. I know you have a plan. Yes, I have. And you can have that total peace inside your spirit that each and every one of us long for. So this morning, just remember when we leave here and you hear all of these things, my help comes from the Lord. Yes. My help comes from the Lord. Amen. Even, in, even in daily life, my help comes from the Lord. Yes. Amen. It doesn't matter what somebody says about me or to me. My help comes from the Lord. Amen. Let's get excited about the coming of the Lord. Let's get excited to tell people he's coming back. Let's not sit in doom and gloom and think, you know what, I don't know what's going to happen in this world. Because I don't. I'm not, I'm not at all going to even try to prophesy what's going on in this world. Because that's not my job. My job is to tell you, our help comes from Jesus. Amen. Our help comes from the Lord. Yes. And if you are not full up this morning, come get some more. Come get it all. Fill us up. This is our filling station. Come to the Lord and fill it back up. And leave here with more of God than you help, than you came here with. That's the best thing you can do for you today. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So today, as we leave, just don't be scared. Don't worry about it. God is in control. Amen. God is in control. This is so exciting. God is in control. Right? Hey. 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 So if 